you know, you go to the gym and you watch these people doing all sorts of sit-ups, abdominal exercises, week after week, and no change in their midsection. Today I want to talk about why abdominal exercises will not work in reducing your belly fat. Now, this study that I just read, which I'm going to put a link down below, showed that abdominal exercises produced no significant effect on weight, body fat percentage, abdominal circumference, abdominal skin fold, or abdominal subcutaneous fat loss. Subcutaneous fat is the superficial fat right underneath your skin. But on a positive note, what it did do is increase the person's overall endurance so they can do these exercises longer. Okay, that's cool. But what about your belly? Well, there are three things going on. You have the superficial fat underneath your skin. That's the subcutaneous fat. And then you have the fat that's on your liver. The first thing that happens is the liver fills up with fat and then it spills over fat in and around the organs in the abdomen. And so all three situations, subcutaneous, visceral fat, and liver fat come from the same thing. Too much insulin. And that occurs because the person's consuming too many carbs. So the question is, does abdominal exercises reduce insulin? And the answer is, no, it doesn't. And this is why people are not getting results. And so if you're new to my channel and you haven't watched a lot of videos, there's several things that you can do to create a huge change in your midsection. In fact, 80% of your results in changing the shape of your stomach and shrinking it has to do with not exercise, but your diet. You simply need to reduce your carbs, get on healthy keto. I put a link down below of how to do that. And you definitely need to start doing intermittent fasting. Okay. The combination of those two will produce the majority of results in your midsection. And then you can definitely add exercise as well, but not just abdominal exercises. You would want to do high intensity interval training, and that definitely will help, but only about 15%. All right. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. So the question is, what exercise will burn the most fat? Okay. Out of the three variables, we have duration, intensity, and recovery. Intensity is the factor that will burn more fat than any other exercise. In fact, intensity will increase growth hormone by 450%. So what I'm going to demonstrate is a type of exercise called interval training. What the heck? <sighs> These kids, gum. High fructose corn syrup. This is, this is going to kill you. So I like to take the bike and you can do hills, you can do uh, sprints and then you can relax because you can coast with the bike. But when you do this, um, you probably don't want to start with a hill, you want to start with something a little bit smaller. There are many exercises like you could do, uh, for example, you can do the skiing exercise back and forth, jumping back and forth. You can do um, um, pushing against the wall, trying to push the wall down. You can uh, jump rope. You can do um, push-ups. You can jump up on up and down like burpees. But the main thing is to get high intensity with some rest back and forth. But before you do this, make sure you're sleeping, make sure you have enough energy, and make sure you're somewhat fit. And if you're just going into this, you might want to start off walking and then doing it very, very small and gradually working yourself up. But you want to work up to this. Let's check it out. Whew. Okay, so that was called jump the stump to get rid of your bump, right? So that's what my wife always calls it. All right, so you can uh, take anything in your house. You can do stairs. You can, if you don't have a stump, you can use, go to the gym. If you want to find a little platform and you can hop on things, it's called plyometrics. So basically it's, a, it's the science of hopping, but you want to get your whole body, every single cell, every single muscle in explosion. And then we want to relax. We're relaxing now. We're going to let our body 
fully come down to a pre-resting state for about three minutes. So you're gonna do high intensity for maybe 30 seconds and rest for three minutes. But each person is different. You can calculate your exercise recovery cycle with different tests, but we're not gonna get into that right now. So you're resting, you're sitting here, you're waiting for your heart rate to come down. You're not jogging in place, you're sitting down. Um, but you wanna start off small. You wanna jump on small little uh, platforms to work up to this. Don't just jump right up here right away. But I have people in their 70s that are doing this on their stairs at their house. So check out this guy right here. He's 75 years old. He's jumping on his stairs back and forth. Him and his wife are doing it. She's not in her 70s, she's in her 50s. And they do this every other day. So it's very, very healthy for the cardiovascular system. It's good for your blood sugars and it's really good for fat burning. I wanna take it to the next level. I wanna see if there's something I could actually jump on that is a little higher than I normally jump on. I have an idea. Let's go over here. What do you think, should I do it? Should I try it? Oh, what the heck, you only live once. There's one more point about interval training. To keep growth hormone, which is the anti-aging, fat-burning hormone, continually going up, you have to keep making it more difficult because your body adapts. And when your body gets used to it, that hormone doesn't increase anymore. So you have to constantly come up with creative ideas to get, make it harder and harder. So I'm kind of at the stage where I need to come up with a, a really difficult jump, a really high jump. Let me think what I can do. I have an idea. <laughs>